Welcome to another episode of Scam Squad. Hi, Vicki. Hi, how are you, Patty? I'm doing great, and I know we have one of our favorite guests back with us today. We do. Welcome back to Dr. Judy Christman Yates, who has more important things to tell us about scams involving the uh, IRS. And uh, it's very timely since we're into tax season. But before we start, Judy, I wanted to just uh, mention that I recently read the Better Business Bureau 2020 Scam Tracker Report. And this is a very informative study of the top scams for 2020. And it talks about the median dollar losses broken down by age group and gender. It talks about risk and susceptibility factors and how to best educate people to protect themselves from getting scammed. But what I found particularly interesting, it's not just to know enough to know the type of scams that are out there. It's actually more important to know about the behaviors and the tactics of scammers. So I asked Judy to come back and talk about five new tax scams four of which she referenced in her latest newsletter, and giving us some more specifics of, of exactly how these scams operate. So Judy, thank you for coming back. And um, the first one talks about, the first scam that you talk about is the threat to suspend somebody's social security payment. So, so tell us about this one. Okay, um, thank you, Vicki and Patty, for having me back on Scam Squad. Um, I'm gonna start with some good news first, and that is um, our federal government, the IRS has extended our uh, uh, filing, our taxes until May 17th. So we get another, about a month, a little bit longer than a month. That, <laughs> okay, that does not apply to, if you happen to have to pay estimated tax payments, that does not get it extended. But okay. um, you know, putting in any penalties, interest, additions, that'll all start after May 17th. And that's, um, that's for federal taxes. You need to check with your state. It just so happens that California has gone along with that. So if you're filing California taxes, you have till May 17th. That may not be the case for every state. So check on that. But that's the good news. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, one of the things, it's called a phishing scam, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. It's like throwing out a line. You get hooked on the line. They want personal information. They're phishing for information. So a website or an email may look very, very legitimate. All of us could create a legitimate looking website in not very many minutes. It's really amazing how much uh, technology will help you with that. And um, so what they'll do is they'll send you a text or an email or give you a call, all sounding legitimate, using really cool words, emotional words, something that looks really official. And um, they'll ask you to um, send them information or push a link. And I've reminded you, don't just click, click, click. Be very careful about what you click on. And you can always do your homework and go to um, Google um, and you know, put something in there, a search web engine, and put something in there and ask about that. But only go for government uh, links that end in .gov for what we're doing, especially today, like with the IRS. So tell us about the threat to suspend your social security payments specifically. How does that work? Well, there's a new term that I've recently heard and they talk about bad actors. A bad actor is a scammer, or it could be you know, a friend that is just trying to pull one over on you. But in this case, um, a back, bad actor, um, you know, once again, they will do something, write something, text something that looks very, very legitimate. And then they'll you know, have an urgency with it, that it's a reminder or you know, hurry up and do this, or here's a deadline or what it happen, happens to be. And, they want you to click on this stuff. And when you do, what you do is you automatically download malware. When you have malware on your machine, they can lock up your computer and they'll leave you a phone number or an email address that, you know, uh -huh. don't click. Um, and um, you were, are responding only to that scammer. You know, if that happens to you and your computer locks up, you need to immediately turn it off or close it, unplug it, 
and you need to take it to your local uh, fix it person, preferably somebody that doesn't sell you uh, anything that they just right. have on the computer and have them check for malware. malware. And um, they can spy, they can get access to your computer, they can steal all of your contacts. They can look like you because they've stolen all of your contacts. They can get any passwords that you put on there. So you have to be really careful and not click. And it's true, isn't it, that the IRS is not going to contact you by email. And they they're not, not going to, they're not going to threaten to suspend your social security payments if you refuse to give them certain information. That is absolutely true. They, they never, first of all, they don't threaten you. You know, right. they're going to get your money one way or the other. They don't need yes. to threaten you. They're not going to ask you for um, gift cards. They're not going to ask you for Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, but they don't threaten. They do not call you directly and they do not send you emails. What they do is they'll send you something that looks official in the mail saying, we have this problem. We're concerned about this, that, and the other. And if you get one of those letters, I recommend that you go to that search engine, you put in whatever they have put down there as an address or a phone number, put it in the search engine and then put complaints or scams after that and um, look it up. But um, you're absolutely right that, um, you know, they are not gonna call and threaten you. Okay, now you there's also a scam that involves something called the Taxpayer Advocate Service. Tell us about that. That is actually legitimate. I personally had to look that up because it okay. sounded phony to me. Well, that is legitimate. It's an agency within the IRS. So if you ever have a problem with the IRS and it's um, presenting a, a hardship, financial hardship to you, you can go to the Taxpayer Advocate Service, TAS, and go to irs.gov, then look up uh, Taxpayer Advocate Service, there is a 1-800 number. You can communicate with them. They never, ever ask for money. They are there. That's sort of a customer service for the IRS that is separate. So they're not beholden to the IRS. They're entirely separate. So don't let anyone call and say, you know, we're from TAS and we want you to pay this or we're going to offer you uh, some type of payment service or whatever it happens to be. Not going to happen. Okay, so once again, the, the scammers are taking advantage of what is actually a legitimate service, a legitimate organization. They're calling, pretending to be from that organization, offering you a service, but of course they want you to pay for the service when actually you don't have to. It's part of something that the IRS provides for you. Payment you are free. absolutely right. Okay, and they will not so, be so yeah. So the, the red flag is, it's a legitimate service, taxpayer advocate service is legitimate, but if somebody calls and says, they're from that service, but you need to pay, that's your red flag, you know you're dealing with a, a scam. And even more directly, if they call in there, they say they're from that service, they never call you. You have to initiate that call. You have to initiate the call, that's good to know. So there's, there's also something called the ghost tax return preparer. Tell us what that is. Okay, that's just as simple as somebody pre uh, pretending that they are a legitimate tax preparer. Okay. And um, the way you can tell this, number one, is always ask for, for credentials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they need to be certified. They need to have, they need to know what they're doing. If someone does not, if they file your tax return and they don't sign it, that's illegal. You know that that's a scam if they don't sign it. They not only have to sign their name, they actually have to put their ID number uh, down. Um, if they say, oh, we can pad this so we can get more money back, or let me just add this, that, and the other, and you can give me a percentage of this back. No, that's, okay. that's illegal. That, once again, is a scammer. It's not legitimate. So um, it turns out that in researching this one, I discovered that there is something um, that one more bit of security that you can add. Um, first of all, it's up to you to do your homework to get the right tax preparer. And I know everybody's qualified and knows how to do that. And you can search it on your search engine and make sure they're legitimate or talk to a friend and know who they're going for, but make sure they have the credentials. Um, but the, um, 
Other thing that, that you can do is you can add a identity protection pin. And this go to irs.gov. And what this is, is a second verification validation to not only put your social security number on there, you give them, they give, they send us a pin number every year. It's a new pin number every year. But right now we have um, scammers that will, um, you know, they'll go on and they'll steal your ID. And actually, Vicki, I think that takes us into number five, which is that tax refund fraud. Yes, you know, tell us about that. Yes, it turns out that uh, tax-related identity theft is when you're, uh, a criminal actually steals uh, your social security number and then they file um, a false return. Mm -hmm. And um, then, you know, you just go ahead and you decide to file you know, within the timeline and the IRS kicks it back and says, oh, no, somebody's already used your number. Well, that's definitely a red flag. It means somebody is using your social, social security number. And what they do is they will use your social security number. They will um, say that they didn't make very much money, but they will put in a lot of claims to get back kickbacks or rebate right. credits. Yeah. And it can take you months, maybe even more than a year, to you know, fix your credit, and it's just a nightmare. So if you were to get this PIN number, and I think that you know, after researching this and finding out about it, I will be doing that this week before I okay. Find. And um, it's just something that you know is really, really smart to do. And once again, all the stuff that we've talked about today regarding the IRS, just go to irs.gov and check it out for yourself. So this actually happened to my husband and I. Somebody used our tax number and filed a false claim. Thankfully, the IRS caught it and they informed us uh, as to what had happened. You so it, it didn't create any problem for us. We have no idea who did it, uh, but thankfully the IRS was on top of it. They caught it before it could create any problem for us. So we were very lucky, you but yeah, very it does lucky. happen. It will, it will happen. It can happen um, to anybody. It can happen to anybody, absolutely. And we have no idea how in the world our information got out there, but as we know, and as I've said every, many times, everything is out there on the dark web these days. So it's not that hard for crooks who are determined to get information that they can use to take advantage of us. That's why, as you say, it, it behooves us to use every safety technique and tool that is available to us. Right. So thank you once again, Judy, for keeping us up to date, keeping us informed and keeping us safe. And uh, thank you for having me. Stay safe. Thank we you, shall. Um, Patty. If we have time, I do have some good news. Yes, stay on the line, Judy, so you can hear the good news too if you'd like. <laughs> so, I thought this was interesting. It actually, the good news is actually that another um, uh, money mule was picked up and convicted. But the interesting thing was that he was part of the Black Axe Gang, and I have talked about that before. That's a group of uh, scammers who operate out of Nigeria. So this was a, um, a person who had uh, Amadi as his last name, Ike Amadi. He had dual Canadian and Nigerian citizenship, and he worked as a money mule for the Black Axe Gang, and what he would do is set up bank accounts in the United States and in Canada and then move money from victims into those bank accounts and then move the money out to the scammers in Nigeria. But apparently the Black Axe gang, and they're huge and they run a lot of scams. They started as a fraternal organization on college campuses in Nigeria back in the 1970s. And they eventually evolved into an organized crime group. They're responsible for millions and millions and millions of dollars lost throughout the, the, the world. Uh, they're particularly well known for their romance scams. But this is what I thought was kind of interesting. Um, apparently these scammers sit in internet, in internet cafes in Nigeria and conduct 
fraud online. So can't you just see it all these people <laughs> I can in, exactly. <laughs> in an internet cafe and running all these scams. With the and apparently when, when they do the romance scams, they have very detailed scripts that they follow to charm their victims, often lonely widows. And uh, they do outreach. They pretend to be from their hometown, uh, but they're out of the country, of course, on some kind of uh, you know emergency or a work assignment. And of course, their, eventual, their aim is to eventually have these victims uh, part with their money, sometimes in phony investment opportunities. But again, this is a money mule who was captured, he was convicted, and he was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. Wow. So he's going away for a long time. Wow. Anyway, that's well, the good news. It does seem like more and more people are getting justice. So yes, it's very good news. So I urge you, if you're listening and you know about a scam, to either call your local district attorney's office or if you're in Santa Barbara County, to call the Santa Barbara County Fraud Hotline. Vicki, would you remind our listeners of that number? Of course. It's area code 805-568-2442. 805-568-2442. And also, please report scams to the uh, to the Federal Trade Commission, FTC.gov, uh, and to the FBI, IC3.gov. And of course, also report to your local law enforcement. Thank you so very much. I know there'll be another scam to talk about next week. There will. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks, Patty. Bye. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.